Hello students, welcome. Wendy Ansley here at College of the Desert, uh, welcoming you to a well-rounded and beautiful sequence. Today I, I have my mat, I have a wall nearby, I have two blocks, a strap, and even a blanket or a towel to lift uh, and help in a posture towards the end of the practice today. So welcome. Uh, the theme of our practice is going to be we rise by lifting others. Every time we step on the four corners of our mat, we have an opportunity to work within us and, and help us when we go out into the real world. Starting in Tadasana, mountain pose, root through the four corners of the feet, Pada Bandha, activate those arches, spread those toes, shoulders in line under the ears here, and we draw the shoulders down the back. There's a light little core engagement. Next time you stand in line, think about firm and beautiful Tadasana. Inhale, root into the ground, draw those arms up, energy out the fingertips. Exhale, come into a little dynamic forward fold, heel and toe, heel and toe. Inhale, hands to the shins or the thighs, halfway lift, tailbone out and back. Framing the feet, we're going to step back into Phalakasana plank. Hands are directly under the shoulders, belly button to the spine. We'll stay here, a little core engagement. Gently transitioning, Ashtanga Pranam, we're gonna do knees, chest, and chin. Knees, chest, and chin, all at the ground at the same time. That's what we're working on. We're trying to get there, and we're, however we get there, the best that we can. Tailbone out and back, awakening the backside of the body. Extending those legs back, transitioning to easy cobra. Hands by the chest, press to the tops of the feet. Inhale, we're gonna look up. Elbows in line with the shoulders, or shoulders in line with the elbows. As we press to the tops of the feet, we're awakening the lower back. On the exhale, we're coming back into a tabletop, connecting dynamic expression here. Hands under the shoulders, knees under the hips. Inhale, look up, tailbone out and back. Exhale, round the back, belly button to the spine. Inhale, look up. Exhale, round the back. 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 Extending, abducting that right arm to the side here. We're going to transition as we thread the needle here, lowering the right shoulder to the ground, right ear to the ground. And let's take the left hand fingertips almost towards kind of the center of the mat. And we're going to simply inhale and exhale through the nose. Breathe in into that release of the shoulders. We're all connected, gently release, come back to tabletop. Abducting this left arm here, right to shoulder level. We're going to thread that left arm, pressing the left shoulder into the ground, the left ear, taking the right hand kind of to the center of the mat in line with the face here, coming on to the fingertips, and just breathe and release into the left shoulder here. We'll stay here several breaths. Gently release, 
come back kind of to tabletop here. I like to bring my hands forward a few inches. I lead with those hips. I'm going to come into my first dynamic down dog heel and toe. Come into down dog press through the palms, create length in the spine, tailbone back and down, pubis bone back and up. Transition, we're going to walk it forward. Inhale, halfway lift. Hands to the shins or the thighs or the ground. Exhale, come into forward fold. This is where we try to go more to our midfoot. It's okay if we need to widen the knees, bend the legs a little bit, but breathe into those hamstrings. Gently bend the knees, inhale, draw those arms up, open the chest, open the heart. Exhale, heart centered. Inhale. Draw those arms up. Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale. Come into a little forward fold. Heel and toe. Still awakening. Inhale. Halfway lift. Either hands to the shins, the thighs, or the ground. Gaze forward and down. Hands by the feet, we're going to step back into Phalakasana plank, round the upper back, belly button to the spine, core engagement. Gently lower to the knees. We're going to do knees, chest, and chin all at the ground at the same time. Many of us are just going to be working on this pose, knees, chest, and chin. Sometimes I like to kind of draw my feet off the ground and eventually take my hands, clasp my hands, and come into another fuller expression. So either knees, chest, and chin. A few of you might be able to come into this pose as we open up the shoulders just a bit. transitioning, hands by the chest, send those legs back, easy cobra, hands by the chest, press to the tops of the feet, and we're just simply breathing into the lower back, awakening the vulnerable muscle groups, such as the lower back, which is a beautiful part of yoga. On the exhale, come into the tabletop, draw the palms forward just a few inches, lead with those hips, down dog. Press through the palms, spread those fingers, root a little bit more in the second and the third fingers. Draw the pubis bone back and up and firm those thighs and press those thighs back. Transition, walk it forward. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. We're going to relevate up in our forward fold. Ankles, knees, and shins together. As we explore diving into a form of malasana, heels are lifted. I kind of adjust my hands back here and I find my balance. I'm connecting to the feet, the ankles, knees, and shins, the front of my shins, even in lightly engagement of my mula bandha, the pelvic floor here. And I might continue to reflect within as I draw my head towards my knees, closing my eyes and staying here several breaths.
Gently lowering the heels. Gently bend the knees. Inhale, swan dive up. Open the chest. Open the heart. Exhale, heart centered. Beautiful. As we set our, our intention for our practice today, I like to sometimes leave you a little message that on the mat as well. Our theme today is we rise by lifting others. And something that relates to this is a message I got, you know, from a, a super good book called The Four Agreements. And one of the messages of The Four Agreements, the first one is to be impeccable with your word. Words can create beauty, love, and heaven on earth. The word that you set, the word can set you free. It can enslave you even more than you know. Your word is magic. It can build others around you. That is the power of word. That is the power of being impeccable with our word. As we close our, let's fold our hands in Anjali Mudra and lower our head to our fingertips. Take a moment and reflect on the power of our words and lifting others and lifting ourselves. Throughout this practice, I want you to think of kind, empathetic, positive words, maybe throughout our postures and our breath. Take a moment and honor this practice for somebody, a friend who believes in you, a family member, a significant other. And we'll look up and we'll continue to get started. Beautiful. We'll start off in another wide-legged form of Malasana prayer squat. If some of you want to use a block to help you get started, I'll set it out here. My feet are wider than hip width apart, a little bit, well, about hip width, a little bit wider. My toes are pointed out, my heels are pointed in. Rooting through the ground, I'm going to inhale, draw those arms up, energy out the fingertips. Exhale, I'm coming into beautiful Malasana here. Elbows inside the knees, knees inside those elbows, creating length in the spine, breathing evenly into both hips. Framing this left foot, I'm going to take diagonally, diagonally take that right leg back here and do one or two expressions here. Coming into the posture, I've got my left hand on my hip. I've got my right hand up. I'm kind of rotating the pinky in or I go to the block or to the ground and kind of open my chest, open my heart and simply breathe into this right hip. Breathe into this right psoas. Right hand on the hip, draw that left arm up and either to the ground. So where we connect with the breath, inhale, exhale through the nose. Breathe into the hip. Gently release, hands come out in front, come onto the ball of the back foot. Draw that back foot up, come into Malasana here. Root through the ground, create length in the spine. Stay here several breaths. Hands on either side. Take that left leg diagonal. One or two dynamics. Right hand on the hip, draw that left arm up, rotate the pinky in. We'll stay here several breaths. Mm -hmm. 
left hand on the hip, draw that right arm up, rotate that right pinky in, or you can bring the left hand to the hip. Inhale, exhale through the nose. Breathe into this left hip, open the psoas, the psoas. Muscles, beautiful. Gently release, hands come on this beginning of the mat, come onto the ball of the back foot. Draw that back foot up, come back into beautiful malasana here. Awaken the arches in the feet and draw length in the spine. This is again, press the elbows inside the knee. The knees gaze forward. We have the ability to lift others around us. Choosing kind words. Searching for opportunities for those words. I like to express into this pose. I take my hands outside my toes and I'm going to do a little dynamic where I exhale straight in the legs. Inhale and come back up. Look up. Exhale straight in the legs. Inhale. Look. Up. One more. Exhale. Straighten the legs. Inhale. Look up. Come back. Hands in prayer. Elbows on the inside. Several more breaths. So it's okay to almost kind of rock side to side a little bit. Just opening those hips here. Inhale. Root and rise. Coming up without the hands and the knees. Heel toe it in. Beautiful. Taking the blocks, we're going to dive into a little core awakening. Connecting this, this sequence, we connect in everything, balance, core. We'll start with the blocks on either side, and we're going to come into Navasana. In Navasana boat pose, beginners can take the hands on either side, right? Legs parallel to the ground. Or if we can, we now extend those arms, extend those legs, coming into a core awakening, really strengthening the hip flexors here, really strengthening the psoas and all the core muscles. I'm mirroring you. You're going to cross your right leg over your left. And now we're going to, it's almost like a, a little... Uh, sukhasana lift. So we're going to press, easy sukhasana, press through the blocks and draw, engage the core and drive those hips back a little bit. So here we go. Lift up. Good. Draw, engage the core to draw the hips back. Gently release. Just rest the feet on the ground. Let's do a cleansing breath here. Inhale through the nose, exhale through the mouth. Cleansing breath, inhale. Exhale. Navasana again, yoga signature core exercise. Either hands here, legs parallel. Eventually extend the arms, extend those legs. Beautiful posture, active legs, active arms. Cross the left leg over the right. Press through the blocks. We're going to lift the core, drive those hips back. Gently release. Beautiful core awakening. This is a, a challenging next one. We're going to do a little straddle. So we take the straddle and I take the blocks outside of this left leg. And we're coming into like a hip hinge and again, a deep core awakening here. The stronger those hip flexors get, the more advanced core work you can do. So we have the block on either side and we're going to take this, we're going to push into the block and we're going to drive this left leg up and down three more times. Three, two, one. Beautiful. And now we're going to press into the blocks and see if we can kind of engage the core, drive those hips back, and lift both legs up. So we're going to press into the box and lift. Good. 
gently release. Not easy, is it? We're going to take the blocks outside this right leg, your right leg, and we're going to kind of lightly press into the blocks, draw the right leg up and down. Beautiful core awakening. And now we're going to press into the blocks, drive the core and hips back. Ready and go. Gently release. Taking the blocks on either side and just work on this rooting and rising. So we're going to lift the feet up and kind of take that momentum and try to root and rise and come up without our hands and knees. Using the blocks, your hands and knees to help you get there is part of the journey. Very proud of you guys. Diving into a little bit of balance. Clean my mat off a little bit. So we're gonna to come to the edge of the mat here. I'm gonna mirror you. So if some of you guys want to use a block in this, you can. I'm going to set the block here for some of you guys that might use this. Or well, maybe I'll demonstrate, I guess, a little bit with the block. We're going to add a little flow into this and we're going to connect into balance. So here we are and you're going to take your left foot, intersects with the arch or the heel, preparing for extended triangle. We're going to add balance to this. We're going to grow this beautiful sequence. Arms come down by the sides. We gaze over that left hand. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, reach towards the wall. We come into Utita Trikonasana. Maybe the hand comes to the block. We're going to lower that right hand to the hip. We're going to bend the left knee and we're drawing the block up about six inches. We're drawing that back leg for balancing half moon. And then we're going to press, straighten that left leg and come into beautiful half moon. Eventually we try to open the back leg here. Yes stacking the back leg on the shelf. See how my shoulders are stacked over one another? I want you to take this back hip and open it. Open it. Come in to balance. Bending that front left leg, drawing that block back if we can. Come into beautiful triangle. In triangle, take the bottom ribs, draw them forward, just breathe into that back hip. Inhale and rise, preparing for Virabhadrasana 2. So now I'm going to take that back leg, send it back, draw my front knee towards that pinky toe, and now I'm going to gaze over the front hand. Press that back thigh back. Adding a transition, we're going to draw those hands back in line here, frame the foot, and either, I'm going to move my block a little bit, either come into partial chaturanga or full chaturanga as I bend those elbows, draw my sternum forward, notice my shoulders in line with those elbows, inhale, up dog, press to the tops of the feet, inner spiral the backs of the thighs, pelvis forward, broad in the collarbones. Exhale, down dog. We'll stay here several breaths. Inhale, exhale through the nose. Transition, walk the hands and the feet towards one another. Come into a beautiful forward fold. Come more to that midfoot. Breathe into the hamstrings. Okay. 
Inhale, halfway lift. Back to forward fold. Gently bend the knees. Open the chest. Open the heart. Exhale, heart centered. Beautiful. Taking the block, we're going to go into this way here, the other side here. How are we doing, everybody? Let's start off with a cleansing breath. Inhale through the nose, exhale through the mouth. Cleansing breath. Inhale. Exhale. Beautiful. Adjusting as you take that right leg here, draw that back foot in 15 degrees or so. Front foot again pointed 90 degrees, preparing for extended triangle. Again, the transition in and out of this posture and the sequence so important, right? How we get in and out of our postures. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, reach towards that wall. Come into Trikonasana. Many of us hands by the shins. Eventually, we come to the block or to the ground, depends where you are. Breathe into the back hip. Transitioning, we slightly bend that front leg, hand to the hip, and we draw the block up about six inches, maybe a foot, and we're going to drag this back leg. And like a hydraulic pump, we lift that standing leg, we lift, we lift, we lift, shoulder over one another, we stack that back leg on the shelf. Beautiful. Open that back hip. It's healing. Healing for the pelvic hip girdle. Beautiful connection of balance. Transition. We bend that front right leg. We draw that leg back, preparing for a triangle. Slide that block back. And here's this is where I think about just drawing those bottom ribs forward, breathing into the back hip. Preparing, coming, transitioning up for Virabhadrasana 2. This is where I send that back leg back, draw that right knee towards the pinky toe, and then take that back thigh, press it back, gaze over the front arm. Framing the foot, maybe adjusting the block. Step back into Phalakasana here. Whatever we want to transition, I'm going to come into Chaturanga as I bring my sternum and chest forward, sh shoulders in line with the elbows. Inhale, up, dog pelvis forward. Press to the tops of the feet. Sacrum towards the knees. Exhale, lead with those hips. Auto Mukha, down dog. Stay here, several breaths. Press through the palms now, length in the spine. Tailbone back and down. Transition, walk the hands and the feet towards one another. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, come into a deeper forward fold. Let's continue to come more to the midfoot. Sitting bones rise towards the ceiling. We'll stay here several breaths. Breathe into those hamstrings. Gently bend the knees, swan dive up, open the chest, open the heart, exhale.
all heart centered. Beautiful. Way to connect. Way to connect. I'm going to continue and grow this, grow this sequence a bit. Rooting through the four corners of this left foot, we're going to draw this right knee up. Preparing for warrior three, touching on balance. We're going to shift that right leg back. And we're going to rotate that right hip inward. So connect with the front leg and the back leg. Hip stability. Some of you guys may be able to take those hands. Come forward. Preparing, coming, transitioning back to crescent moon. And this is where we connect the entire body in this pose. Front leg parallel to the ground, knee in line over the ankle, and we draw that back hip forward. Transitioning, we'll take the left hand on the hip, we'll draw the right hand to the fingertips and come into a a beautiful, we're going to extend that left arm, a beautiful kind of mid-thoracic rotation, beautiful mob mobility here. Fingertips towards the ceiling, continue to inhale, exhale through the nose. Draw that right hip inward, rotate it internally. Lower the right knee to the ground. And we're going to explore clasping the back foot here and drawing the foot towards the buttocks. Gently release, frame the foot. Come back to Ardha Anna Manasana, shift those hips back. Come more, draw the sternum and the chest forward. Half splits. Beautiful. Stay here, several breaths. And this is where some of you are going to explore drawing that left heel forward. You might utilize the blocks to help you. Drawing that left hip forward, coming into a release of our hip extensors, hip flexors challenging yourself. I'm practiced enough where I have my Anamanasana, but I continue to challenge myself in this sequence, in this posture, drawing that front hip back, back hip forward. This posture teaches me so much and maybe it helps me lift others. It's self-care, it's breath, it's a challenge. It's almost like a posture with purpose, and we want to live with purpose. We'll stay here about 10 more breaths. Come out of this pose, hands by the side. Let's draw, let's come onto the ball of the back foot a little bit. Let's draw that front heel back in and explore our down dog. Stay here, several breaths, press through the palms, create length, firm those thighs, press them back.
Transitioning to Phalakasana here. Core awakening, just connecting. Dome the upper shoulders just a bit. Transitioning lower. We're just going to come onto our stomachs here. And prepare for oscillating cobra, a beautiful spinal extension. So it's here I'm going to rest my forehead onto the ground. My feet are hip width apart. In an oscillating cobra, I'm going to come onto my fingertips and keep my hands under the elbows here. Press to the tops of the feet. I'm going to inhale and lift. Inhale and lift. Inhale and lift. Pubis bone to the ground. Gently release. Come to all fours. Walk those hands forward a few inches. Lead with the hips, Adho Mukha. Take those heels, widen them, and feel those inner thighs spiraling back again. This is a beautiful transitional pose. We feel every muscle group here. Firm those thighs, draw the tailbone back and down, and the pubis bone back and up. Breathe into any stiffness. Walk the hands and the feet towards one another. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, swan dive up. Open the chest. Open the heart. Exhale, heart centered. Beautiful. Connecting now with the other side. Coming into a little hip stability, hip strength. Rooting through the four corners of the right foot. Draw that left knee up. Sending that left leg back to about hip level. I want you to rotate that left hip inward just a little bit. Firm that right hip. Eventually, we take those hands out in front. Transition to crescent moon. Connect the entire body here. Draw that left hip forward. Front leg parallel to the ground. Create length in the spine. Right hand on the hip. Draw that left hand down. Come onto the fingertips. Draw that right arm up. A little mid thoracic here rotation. Lower the left knee to the ground. And can we clasp that back foot with the right hand and draw? the foot towards the buttocks. And this is where we have this release, release of the quadricep. Transition in Ardha Anamanasana. Come onto the ball of the back foot a little bit. We're gonna draw and press through that right heel. And we kinda wanna square the hips here and draw the sternum and chest forward, creating length in the spine here. And really, as we press through the heel, we awaken the hamstring. Stay here several breaths.
exploring the sequence, we might grab the blocks here. And we're going to shift that front heel out, preparing for half splits until we can go a little bit lower. Breathe into the hamstrings, front hip back, back hip forward. Good. Wherever you are into the po posture, let the posture teach you and use the breath here to connect and maybe go a little bit deeper. Come on to the ball of the back foot. Draw that right heel back. Come into down dog posture. Widen the heels back. Firm those thighs, tailbone back and down, pubis bone back and up. Gently lower to the knees. Beautiful. Nice. And we're going to prepare. We're going to come to the wall a little bit. So I'm going to take my mat back and come to the wall. Beautiful. And prepare for um, Cobra. Okay. I mean, not Cobra. We just kind of warmed up with our Cobra. And um, now we're going to prepare for Ustra Asana Camel. So we're about an arm length apart here. Okay. And I like to have the wall because the wall, when we push into the wall, we feel an expression. I want you to think about taking the upper spine and right and coming forward with the upper spine and opening the chest and opening the heart. So the wall serves as a prop as we compress that spine here and really in the end we're opening the chest and we're opening the heart eccentrically we'll call that so we're about an arm length apart here here we are and we'll start you either can tuck the toes to make it easier or uh, I like to come into plantar flexion if I want to walk those hands back a little bit more so our hands are heart centered here folding the hands we're going to inhale, we're going to create length. I'll just demonstrate real quick. I'm going to inhale, create length. On the exhale, I'm going to press into the wall to kind of open my chest, open my heart, and draw those hips forward and come up. And we'll do that two times, okay, into camel. We'll hold longer than that one. But again, I want to open my chest, open the heart, and press into the wall for that. Inhale, create length. Exhale, come back. Press into the wall, upper spine through the heart. Inhale, come back up. Heart centered. Beautiful, root into the ground. Inhale, create length. Exhale, come onto the wall. Open the chest, open the heart. Inhale, come up.
exhale, heart centered. Beautiful. Adding a little spinal twist here. We're already about an arm length away. We're going to take that left arm back, draw that right arm kind of center here, center in line with the face here, and continue to draw the left hip forward. So we've got a little bit of a spinal twist here, just neutralizing the spine. Heart centered. Extending that right arm to the wall, drawing that left arm out and drawing that right hip forward. Come center. Beautiful. Maybe just one more kind of neutralizing the spine. Let's draw those arms up to the ceiling here and just create length. Gently release. Coming to the center of the mat, we might take a block. We might take a strap for some of us and we'll connect the shoulders and the hips here. So I'll mirror you guys and we're going to cross. I like to lift my legs up. We're going to cross the right leg over the left, but I often come forward in life and then take a step back forward in life here and then kind of come back as I try to root through the sitting bones. Beautiful. Some of you might like to take the strap. This is so healing for the shoulder girdle. And you're gonna take the strap. We'll start with the left arm. As we draw that left arm up, externally rotate it, guide it down the back, because we're really breathing into these hips. And then we're gonna take the right arm, draw that thumb up, and either take the strap or clasp the fingertips, and then press the head into the arm and breathe into those hips. Some of you that can kind of come into this arm stretch easily may fold forward into a de deeper expression. I like to kind of release, take my block as I come forward, almost kind of onto the fingertips a bit, rest my head maybe onto the block here and just breathe into this release of both hips. Often my exhale is a little bit longer than my inhale on this expression. Inhale and rise. And we will prepare for Gomukhasana, cow face pose, the other side here. So we're going to 
reconnect here, both legs up, draw the left over the right, shift forward and back, shift forward and back, beautiful. And we're going to draw the right arm up. So some of us might take the thumb and index here. Thumb, the ring inside there. Draw the arm up, externally rotate. Draw the fingertips down the spine. This is so healing for the shoulders. And then take the left arm and draw the thumb inward and up the spine here. So connecting to the strap or to the fingertips, and this is where I simply rest my head into the back of my arm here. Breathe into this beautiful shoulder relief. relief. Release. We're going to take the block, possibly in front, and come forward onto the block. Good. Releasing the hips. Connecting to the posture. Inhale and rise. Coming out of this posture. <sighs> Preparing in Paschimottasana, our forward fold. And this is where some of us take that strap. And again, it's important to take those sitting bones, draw them back a little bit to help you draw and rotate the pelvis forward a little bit. Because for some of us, that's a challenge. Sometimes we sit a little bit higher. We utilize a strap, anything to help us get this pelvic hip girdle and draw it forward a bit. So we have the strap, we have a block. I like to actually use another, another block because I'm flexible enough here. And I, again, I almost lift up, draw the pelvis forward a little, a little bit and, and we're going to explore Paschimottasana as we lightly engage the hamstrings to release, I mean lightly engage the quadriceps to release the hamstrings. Inhale, we're going to draw those arms up. Exhale, we're going to come forward and keep light padabanda of those feet. Reach towards the wall. Reach forward, reach forward, reach forward. Beautiful. And come into beautiful forward fold. We'll stay here a while.
Inhale and rise. Beautiful. Almost exploring the exact kind of opposite motion of that pose, we'll explore Halasana. In Halasana, this is where I'd like you to maybe take your blanket, and I take often the folded edge here, so this is the, fold, the folded edge. So not the kind of the, the folded edge here towards the end to give myself a little bit of a, a lift here. And in Halasana, now I'm moving the exact opposite direction. Yoga is the science of healthy living, and many yogis are in complete support of inversions like this, shifting the way the blood flows to the heart, drawing the sternum and chest close to the, shin, to the chin in an expression like this, which is really good for stimulating the glands, such as the thyroid gland. So there's many healing properties in this pose, in postures such as this. Now I take the, the, the lower third here, part of the cervical vertebrae here, and I kind of make sure that they're protected on this mat, uh, on this blanket a, a little bit. And as, as we, I'll demonstrate very quickly, I press my hands into the ground, and I draw those legs back. You either can come into plantar flexion, right? We'll just stay in plantar flexion. You can keep the hands down, or you can keep the hands here, or I like to kind of interlace, but I want you to work on coming up a little bit higher onto the shoulders, that's the most important thing, and then drawing, pressing through the feet and drawing length in the spine, okay? So let's do that together. Press through the hands, make sure the top third of the cervical vertebrae is protected. Press through the palms, draw length, draw those legs back. You can keep the hands where they are. You can interlace the fingers, but I want to come up high on the shoulders and then press through the tops of the feet, drive the sitting bones to the ceiling and bring the sternum towards the chin, sitting bones to the ceiling active legs, length in the spine, we'll stay here a while. Exploring ear squeezing pose possibly. Bend the knees and draw them outside the ears and continue to draw length in the spine as we explore another slight variation, Karnapidasana, ear squeezing pose. Continue to draw length in the spine. Use the knees to lightly squeeze those ears. Protect the cervical vertebrae. Gently release. Rolling out one vertebrae at a time. Beautiful. Adjusting as we come onto 
our mats here and I'm going to simply draw my knees to the chest here in a supine forward fold. Finishing one last with happy baby clasp outer edges of the feet or or the thighs if we're struggling. And we're going to draw the knees towards the shoulders and we're going to lower the tailbone towards the ground. Beautiful, happy baby, which opens the hips, creates length in the spine. Draw the knees to the chest one last time. Breathe evenly into the lower back. And preparing for Shavasana, I like to, I already have the blanket here. I think I'm going to take my little towel and fold it and just rest my head onto that towel as um, I'm already to the wall here too, and I'm going to prepare for a little Viparita Karani on the wall. So I'm coming up to the side, drawing those legs up, and I have the towel for my head. I'm just gonna release and do beautiful, this is about recovery in the legs here. Viparita Karani. I'm going to stay here a while before I come into my Shavasana here.
you can stay in Viparita Karani or you can come into Shavasana. You have your choice, okay? Either one, you can stay in Viparita Karani or you can simply choose to come back and rest and take a little regeneration in our Shavasana. Let the arms, the legs go and just relax. Beautiful. Let everything go. Preparing to come out of the Shavasana. Gently bend the knees. Right arm over the head and use the left hand to press yourself up. Reflecting back on 
our theme, we rise by lifting others, being true and kind and empathetic with your words. Your words are magic. Reflecting back on your intention of your practice, possibly who you offered this practice for. Close your eyes, lower your head to the fingertips. Our words are magic. Be kind, be the light. Namaste. Great job, students.